Okay, so we just received our first radar vector Test for the ILS November, runway 29 right. And tower one two zero point three. It's a trigger that has us setting up our stick. So we're going to source the CDI to the localizer. Make sure that we've got the proper frequency tuned. Right now we've got San Jose, so we're going to cursor up here and we're going to tune the frequency for the ILS. It was in standby. We're going to look for it to identify, but since we're still quite a ways of beam Stockton, it's probably not going to identify yet. Number 345, Bravo Sierra, descend and maintain 3000. You said to maintain 3,000, Fiber Bravo Sierra. And that descent is a trigger to start our descent check before we'll finish our stick in our approach setup first. And then we'll come back to our descent checklist. We've sourced it. We've tuned it. Can't identify it yet. But we do have a good course, 294 is set, and the CDI bar is reading same side safe. Which means that we are getting a good signal, even though we're probably Here's outside the of the surface volume. Contact Stockton Tower 120.3. The only thing we have remaining to do on the localizer is to kick in the autopilot. We could also do a stick on our number two. Number two is Manteca, that's already set. We could come over here to VOR2, and we could do our stick to 317, which is our missed approach radial for the missed off of the ILS. So it's sourced, it's tuned, it's identified, the course is 317, and we would just need to kick in the autopilot for that if we end up losing GPS on our missed approach procedure. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch back to CDI-1. And again, confirm that our stick looks good, STIC, we've just got K to go there. Now at this point, we want to activate the segment outside of SIMS. Since Mark has selected the approach from Modesto, we don't have the segment shown outside of SIMS. So what we can do is we can go direct SIMS down to course and we can dial in 294 which is our final approach course outside of Sims. That way it displays the extended center line just for our situational awareness. Preferably if the approach were loaded from Diger then we could activate the leg, the segment that's outside of Sims between Diger and Sims. Now the stick is complete for the ILS, the VOR, the GPS flight plan, and we're pretty nicely set up for the approach. Now we'll go back to our descent checklist and finish that. Our descent checklist, our altimeter was 3015, and that's now set. Cabin heat defrost is good, landing lights on, fuel system. We did switch tanks over to the uh, fullest, which was on the right. Mixture, we'll hold off on that. So we've got mixture, flaps, and autopilot to go. As we descend, you can see the EGT getting warmer. So if we're going to continue. Three, four, five, Bravo, Sierra, descend and maintain 2,000. Descend and maintain 2,000, five, Bravo, Sierra. Sorry, the EGTs are getting cooler, so we're going to have to bump in a little bit of power or reduce the throttle a little bit. That will cause the EGTs to rise, and I'll keep the uh, engine running smoothly. Bump, bump, in, bump, in, bump in a little bit of this mixture runs to nicely. Yeah, either power reduction sun. or this mixture adjustment can get you to that same uh, 1380 to 1400 region. That's where it runs smooth and it stays cool as well. Okay, so as far as the descent checklist goes, the mixture as required. Brake pressure, you did a check on that. Brakes are good. Altitude, your discretion. If we had a problem with the hydraulics, we'd want to be going to an airport like Stockton Testament with 10,000 feet of runway. We got the traffic uh, side also, zero tank off. Before landing, we we'll just have shoulder harnesses. This is done. Flaps to go, autopilot to go. Number three, four, five, Bravo, Flaps, zero, autopilot. Heading of a zero, nine, or zero. Zero, nine, or zero, five, Bravo, Sierra.
We can tell by 090 that he's doing a good job setting us up for vectors outside of SIMS as we requested. If we had not requested vectors outside of SIMS, we would expect him to be targeting the gate. It is two nautical miles outside of QSEX. He's supposed to have us established at least two outside of QSEX with an intercept angle of 30 degrees or less. Pretty nicely set up for this approach. We'll be flying the published missed approach procedure on this one. So stay tuned for the five C's where we're going to cram full power, mixture and throttle. We're gonna hit the toga button. We're gonna be climbing that point when the toga is activated, if we're autopilot coupled, it's going to bring us up seven degrees nose up, which will give us an excess of 700 foot per minute at first. That's the cram, the climb, the clean is coming up here to raise the flaps. The comply is making sure we're in nav mode, autopilot mode, and that the altitude is pre-selected to the altitude that ATC has issued for the missed approach procedure. Since they haven't issued us anything other than the alternate or the uh, primary missed approach procedure, we'll go with that altitude of 2000. So after we intercept the glide slope, we want to make sure the 2000 is set for the missed approach procedure. Let's cram, climb, clean, comply is this area here, and then call would be calling NorCal departure, Cirrus 345 Bravo Sierra is 400, climbing 2000. Published mist at Stockton. Does that look to you? Looks good. We just either have one more gumps check to go, or just remember when we get the flaps in, we're going to go mixture rich, autopilot. We'll probably hold off on until we pop out at minimums. We're, we're not going to we're not going to see the airport at minimums, so the autopilot will never come off. Once we get below 118, we'll go ahead and put in that first nut. So usually before base or on base, I like to have the airplane slowed down with the flaps in. Series three four five Bravo Sierra, turn left, heading of a zero five zero. Zero five zero five Bravo, sir. The flight operations manual calls for us to have flaps in just prior to glide slope intercept, but Cirrus is okay with us putting the flaps in earlier if we want to get that out of the way. At this point, I usually power back to 50% so that we can get below 119, get the flaps out of the way so it's one less thing to worry about. When we pull back like that, it actually puts us onto the ridge side of peak. So now we're rich of peak at 1375. At this point, I just throw up full rich just to get that out of the way. Because we're looking to put the flaps in in a moment as the speed decays to 119. Set our first notch of flaps. We're at our pre approach level power setting. Approach level should keep us above 100, somewhere in the 105 to 110 range of uh, indicated airspeed. Now we're expecting a heading, an altitude, and a clearance for the approach. It always comes across those three things when we're being vectored to final. So when we hear our call, call sign, the first thing we do is we reach series up three, here. Four, five, Bravo series, two miles from Sims, turn left heading 310, maintain 2000 until established on localizer, clear to ILS and right 29 right approach. 310, 2000, clear to ILS, 29 right, Stockton, five Bravo here. So then we repeat it to ourselves, okay, did we get the heading? Yes. Did we get the altitude? Yes, There's we're no traffic at 2000. Reported or observed we're clear between you and Calabar's the therefore we need the approach button, and we look for approach. glide slope to be armed to capture. We also look to see that the glide slope is in view. We call that out. When we capture the localizer, we're going to call out localizer captured. That'll happen when localizer goes green and heading goes away. He almost did his job right. 
It was Almost. supposed to put us outside of Sims. Uh, nobody's perfect. At this close proximity, it will sequence on to the next waypoint. But if he had you over here, it might not. So you might have to activate that next segment. Otherwise, you'd be reading distance Sims the whole way in on the approach. But you can see it did just sequence on to the next segment. So that looks good. We want to make sure that this flight plan follows along with us so that it's with us on the missed approach procedure. Otherwise, we can find ourselves without any mist. That might have been what happened to you the other day. If it was still stuck on something back here, you won't have a published mist. At least you can Stockton Tower 120.3, Fiber Bravo Sierra. We're a little bit below 50% as a result, we're a little below 100. So let's go up to 52 to make sure that we uh, compensate a little bit for being under speed. I'd like to add 1% for each knot that I'm below 100. That looks like that's bringing us back up above 100. Do you still want the right runway or would you want the left? We'll use uh, right runway. And at that point, we sit there. Six, there. Roger, wind count. With the wind from the right, we were expecting three. a heading bug to the right of the course. Stockton Tower, Sierra 345, Bravo Sierra, ILS 29 right, publish miss. Sierra 345, Bravo Sierra, Stockton Tower, runway 29 right, click for the option. Close your option, 29 right, 5 Bravo Sierra. Okay, we go through the gums checklist again. S is on fullest tank, undercarriage, three greens if we had landing gear by now, uh, or at glide slope intercept. And undercarriage is uh, checked as far as hydraulics go. Mixture is rich, pump is on, switches are good. We don't need pedo heat anymore, so that's off. Oxygen would be off, TKS off if we're out of icing conditions. And a 22 turbo or Fiki, and which is in safety belts is briefing all the passengers in the back, make sure everybody's buckled up, ready to land. Okay, at this point we could descend to 1,800 feet, but a 200 foot delta is not a problem. We can go ahead and pick up the glide slope at this altitude. The service volume for a glide slope is 3,000 feet, so anywhere out here is acceptable uh, in the 2,000 to 3,000 foot range. We see that the glide slope is alive. We call out that it's alive and it's armed to capture. Our airspeed is holding nice and stable now that we've bumped the power up to 52%. We use 50 as a target, but you may find yourself under different weight loading, different temperatures. Uh, you may find yourself a little higher or lower than 50% power to hold 100 to 110 knots. If we get up above 110 knots at any point, then we pull an extra percentage of power off. Okay, we're coming up on glide slope capture. We're going to look for GS to go green, at which point we're going to call out glide slope is captured. We're going to bring the power back to 30% in order to keep our speed in that 100 to 110 knot range. Our barrel minimums, for some reason, were set a little bit on the high side. You want to set those barrel right. minimums for the ILS minimums? Right slope captured. Right slope's captured. Did you want to set the uh, barrel minimums for the ILS with glide slope minimums? Altitude. You set, yes. You set localizer minimums. I did. I did. So, 332? 330? Right. That's 32 okay. plus 100. All right, good. So, the minimums are 230. We always set 100 above that so that we get a 100 foot call out as we approach minimums. And that's what you're going to call out for your designated uh, flight examiner. All right, so our published is set for 2000. Good. The mist is set. We could access it either through changing this over to number two but primarily we're going to use the GPS 
autopilot coupled for this best approach procedure. Airspeed is up there 110 or so. Because we don't have a lot of headwind component, you may find yourself having to bring the power back to 25%. 30% power setting kind of banks on us having a 10 knot headwind. turn left to Foxtrot, contact ground. Turn left to Foxtrot, contact ground, Warrior 443. Fortunately, bringing the mixture rich does cause the CHTs to cool down, but at least we're well prepared for a missed approach procedure uh, as that mixture is full forward as it should be for a full power climb. Doesn't be to go. Nine hundred. At five hundred feet above ground, your hand should be on your throttle, with your finger hovering over the toga button. Eight hundred. Four hundred to go. Three hundred to go. Okay, Gums check is complete. If it were night time, we might switch over to page two to, go. to get rid of the bright light. One hundred. Minimums. Minimums. Okay, minimums. The runway environment is not in sight. Go mist. So you've crammed power, confirming that both of them are forward. Climb. You cleaned. You complied. You've got a good altitude. The autopilot's coupled. You can confirm that you're climbing a thousand foot per minute at first. And now we call. Stockton Tower, Cirrus 345, Bravo Zero, flying the Polish mist. Five Bravo Sierra, contact NorCal, one, two, three, four, eight, five. Corner NorCal, one, three, eight, five, five Bravo Sierra. We come down here to COM1 Mike. NorCal departure, Sierra 345 Bravo Sierra, 800 climbing 2000, Miss Stockton. NorCal departure, Sierra 345 Bravo Sierra, 900 climbing 2000, the published Miss Stockton. Sierra 345 Bravo Sierra, NorCal departure, radar contact, maintain 2000. Maintain 2000, five Bravo Sierra. We sink the heading bug. And if you were in a 22, you could bring the attitude further up if you wanted to, more towards 10 degrees nose up. But on the 20, all you can really do is about seven up before you start getting down below VY. If we at any point lost GPS RAIM, we would want to switch our Cessna stick over 2, 4, to 7, the November vehicle. traffic will be joining you in the holding pattern 1,000 feet below you. If we lost sure GPS is. navigation, <laughs> we'd go heading sure mode 3, 4, first. 5, Bravo Sierra traffic also in the holding pattern, restricted 1,000 feet above you, Cessna. Looking for that traffic, Fiber Bravo Sierra. So if we lost GPS, we'd do a stick over to number two. And since we've already got it set up, it's sourced, it's tuned, it's identified, the course is already defined. All we have to do is kick in the autopilot to nav mode. Really no major difficulty with a GPS loss on a ILS approach. All right, now we're gonna set the power back to 